In the last video, you saw how the attention model allows a neural network to pay attention to only part of an input sentence while it's generating a translation, much like a human translator might. Let's now formalize that intuition into the exact details of how you would implement an attention model. So, same as in the previous video, let's assume you have an input sentence and you use a bidirectional uh, RNN or bidirectional GRU or bidirectional LSTM to compute features on every word. Um, in practice, GRUs and LSTMs are often used for this, with maybe LSTMs being uh, more common. And so, for the forward recurrence, you would have um, a forward recurrence first time step, activation backward recurrence, first time step, activation for the forward recurrence, second time step, activation uh, backward, and so on. I guess I won't throw all of them in. Just a forward fifth time step, um, a backward fifth time step. Well, and, you know, we had an a zero here. Uh, technically, we could also have a, um, I guess, a backward uh, six as a factor of all zeros. Actually, that's a factor of all zeros. And then to simplify the notation going forward, um, at every time step, even though you have the features computed from the forward recurrence and from the backward recurrence in a bidirectional RNN, I'm just going to use a of t to represent both of these um, concatenated together. So at is going to be our feature vector for um, time step t. Although to be consistent with notation we'll use in a second, I'm going to call this t prime. I'm actually going to use t prime to index into the words in the uh, French sentence. Next, we have our forward only, so it's a single direction RNN with state s to generate the translation. And so at the first time step, it should generate y1. And this will have as input some context C. And if you want to index it with time, I guess you could write um, C1, but sometimes I just write C without the superscript 1. And this will depend on the attention parameters. So alpha 1, 1, um, alpha 1, 2, and so on tells us how much attention. And so these um, alpha parameters tells us how much the context will depend on the features we're getting, on the activations we're getting from the different time steps. And so the way we'll define the context is it'll actually be a weighted sum of the features from the different time steps weighted by these attention weights. So more formally, uh, the attention weights will satisfy this, that they'll all be non-negative, so it'll be a zero positive, and they'll sum to one. We'll see later how to make sure this is true. And we will have that the context, or the context at time one, I'll often drop that superscript. That's going to be sum over t prime, all the values of t prime, of this weighted sum of these, um, attention uh, of these activations. So this term here are the attention weights, and this term here, you know, is comes from here. And so alpha t t prime is the amount of attention that y t should pay to a of t prime. So in other words, when you're generating the t output word, how much should you be paying attention to the t prime input word? So that's one step of generating the output, and then at the next time step, um, you generate the second output, and is again done similarly, where now you have a new set of attention weights, um, they define a new way to sum, that generates a new context, this is also input, and that allows you to generate the second word 
only now, yes, this weighted sum becomes the context of the second time step is sum over t prime alpha 2 t prime. So using these um, context vectors, c1, I should write that back in, c2, and so on, this network up here looks like a pretty standard RNN sequence with uh, the context vectors as output, and we can just generate the translation one word at a time. We have also defined how to compute the context vectors in terms of these attention weights and those features of the input sentence. So the only remaining thing to do is to define how to actually compute these attention weights. Let's do that on the next slide. So just to recap, alpha tt prime is the amount of attention you should pay to at prime when you're trying to generate the t words in the output translation. So let me just write down the formulas when talk about how this works. Uh, this is formula you can use to compute alpha tt prime, which we're going to compute these terms e tt prime, and then use essentially a softmax to make sure that these weights sum to one if you sum over t prime. So for every fixed value of t, these things sum to 1 if you're summing over t prime. And using this uh, softmax parameterization uh, just ensures this property that they sum to 1. Now, how do you compute these factors e? Well, one way to do so is to use a small neural network as follows. So s t minus 1 was the neural network state from the previous time step. So here's the network we have. Um, if you're trying to generate yt, then st minus 1 was the hidden state from the previous step that's fed into st. And uh, that's one input to the to a very small neural network, usually a one hidden layer neural network, because you need to compute these a lot. And then uh, at prime, the features in the, from time step t prime is the other input. And the intuition is, if you want to decide how much attention uh, to pay to the activation of t prime, well, the things that seems like it should depend the most on is what is your own hidden state activation from the previous time step. Um, you don't have the current state activation yet because the context feeds into this, so you haven't computed that. But look at whatever your hidden state is of this RNN generating the output translation, and then for each of the positions, each of the words, look at their features. So it seems pretty natural that alpha t t prime and e tt prime should depend on these two quantities. But we don't know what the function is, so one thing we could do is just train a very small neural network to learn whatever this function should be, and trust backpropagation, trust gradient descent um, to learn the right function. And it turns out that if you implement this whole model and train it with gradient descent, the whole thing actually works. This low neural network does a pretty decent job telling you um, how much attention yt should pay to a t prime, and this formula makes sure that the attention weights sum to one, and then as you chug along, generating one word at a time, this neural network actually pays attention to the right parts of the input sentence, and it learns all this automatically using gradient descent. Now, one downside of this algorithm is that it does take quadratic time, or quadratic cost, to run this algorithm. If you have tx words in the input and ty words in the output, then the total number of these attention parameters is going to be tx times ty. Um, and so this algorithm runs in quadratic cost. Although in machine translation applications where uh, neither input nor output sentence is usually that long, maybe quadratic cost is actually acceptable. Although there is some research work on trying to reduce this cost as well. Now, so far I've been describing the attention idea uh, in the context of machine translation. Without going too much into detail, this idea has been applied to other problems as well, such as image captioning. 
So in the image captioning problem, the task is to look at a picture and write a caption for that picture. So in this paper, cited at the bottom by Kevin Xu, Jimmy Barr, Ryan Kiros, Kim Hinshaw, Aaron Corvo, Russell Safudinov, Rich Zemo, and Yosha Benjo, uh, the authors showed that you could have a very similar architecture, look at the picture, and um, pay attention only to parts of the picture at a time while you're writing a caption for a picture. Um, so if you're interested, I encourage you to take a look at that paper as well. And you get to play with all this more in the uh, programming exercise. Whereas machine translation is a very complicated problem, in the program exercise, you get to implement and play with the attention model yourself for the date normalization problem. So the problem of inputting a date like this, this is actually the date of the uh, Apollo moon landing and normalizing it into standard formats or a date like this and having a neural network, a sequence-to-sequence -sequence model, normalize it to this format. This, by the way, is the uh, birth date of William Shakespeare, also is believed to be. And uh, what you see in the programming exercise is you can train a neural network to input dates in you know any of these formats and have it use an attention model to generate a normalized format for these dates. One other thing that's sometimes fun to do is to look at the visualizations of the attention weights. So here's a uh, machine translation example. And here we're plotted in different colors the magnitude of the different attention weights. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but you find that the corresponding input and output words, you find that the uh, attention weights will tend to be high, thus suggesting that when it's generating a specific word in output, it's you know, usually paying attention to the correct word in the input. And all this, including learning where to pay attention when, was all learned using backpropagation with an attention model. So that's it for the attention model, really one of the most powerful ideas in deep learning. Um, I hope you enjoy implementing and playing with some of these ideas yourself later in this week's programming exercises.